This is a story about homelessness and hardship. This story is about Jesse Franklin. We spoke with Jesse back in February, Valentine's Day, where we learned that he would be evicted from his homeless camp in downtown Greensboro. We went to what was his home for the last few years and was soon to be evicted by the owner of the property, Greensboro Plumbing Supply. Jesse was considerably frustrated over his situation. So the only alternative that you've been given is With us to is Amy Murphy. Relocate. It's to relocate and camp outside. Yeah. Also with us is Shannon Stewart. So that's what I'm saying. What was the whole point of them getting all this all in if they just going to shift it somewhere over there, over there, over there? Just leave it alone, man. Just, I mean, we were doing good right here. Then you're going to shift you over there in somebody else's way for them to be doing what the church is doing. At that time in his life, he was looking for housing, a job, and a new place to live. A new place to live meaning another homeless camp, because he has no other options. How long have you, how long have you lived here? So I mean, like, me going on just three and a half, three and a half years. Maybe a little bit longer. Lost count. <laughs> it's good to me, I know that much. Well, I've known a lot of the folks in this camp for years. Um, some people are still here, some people have moved on, um, there's a lot of fluctuation as there is with any camp, but this has been a stable camp for many years now. Always uh, five, six, seven folks living here. Some, sometimes it's the same folks, sometimes it changes, um, but just a really neat, safe, orderly um, place to be. And I've become very close, I come out here with my son, um, and we've become close to a lot of the individuals here. Um, so when it was learned that this camp might need to be shut down um, some of the folks from the camp reached out to me using social media and um, and I immediately contacted them and just felt a duty to um, see if there's anything that I could assist with or at least bear witness to. But why now? Why after three and a half years of homeless people being at this site? Here is why. A disgruntled member of United Institutional Baptist Church which is adjacent to the camp, complained to the IRC and went to Greensboro Plumbing Supply. This is all according to Reverend Freeman of the church. The church would not reveal the name of the individual. Greensboro Plumbing Supply said they had no problems and no trouble from the homeless residents of the tent city. Antonio Wallace, the CEO of Greensboro Plumbing Supply. Well, um, when you look at the unsheltered pop population, you have some of the... Um, individuals, they'll be um, pretty much placed throughout the city of Greensboro. And sometimes they occupy uh, lands or property uh, that are owned by private uh, individuals. Uh, and as a result of that, we'll get phone calls, and those phone calls will uh, let us know that they want uh, these individuals to leave the property. And so uh, many times we have to get them uh, to leave and uh, work out some way to transition them somewhere else, especially if they set up residency uh, on that property uh, for quite some time. But one particular case uh, came about uh, where we were able to uh, reach out to the owners of the property, and um, they had already had a letter of intent on file, uh, which would give us uh, permission to charge anyone that was on the property for trespassing. Uh, but we made contact with them and we worked out things to where they uh, basically rescinded uh, the letter of intent and they allowed the unsheltered uh, uh, individuals to remain there for uh, an extended period of time. And what that did was it allowed us to further work with uh, the Interactive Resource Center uh, and uh, find additional resources to assist us in the transition. So let's get one thing straight here. These guys lived here for three and a half years with no problems, and one churchgoer complains and these guys are gone? That just doesn't make any sense. I guess in this way you have to understand the frustration. I mean, who the heck wants to live in 22 degree weather anyway? Some kind of tax money, you a nuisance. Yeah. It's all about money. That's what it's all about. Yeah, we definitely like feel like we're going to just agree so You no. got to realize, people out here got records. You got felony on their records. They can't go out here and get a job anywhere. You know, the job that you want, you can't get. You know, because they're going to have something to hold you back. But the first thing they holler, why don't you get a job? 
But they're going to give you housing, which after the you know, six, seven months, would you going to be without a job? What good is a job when you can't get a job if you got a record on your job? <laughs> they tell you, oh, we won't show up on your record. No, 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 no. Go ahead and try to get a job. Yeah. Go ahead and get a job with something on your record. See what they tell you. Oh, we can't hire you. I don't care if the record 50 years old. They're going to hold it against you. You don't did your time to society, but they're going to hold it against uh -huh. you anyway like you just did it yesterday. So what they expect you to go out here and get a job, but yeah. you can't get one. And then I'm gonna give you stuff housing. Like that. So you can't pay for it. He can't pay for it. So that's you know, that, that's the problem. Up. I mean. church, church. Then they wonder why homeless is happening like it is. There's no Cause they hold something little that's been old as dirt, but they want to hold it against you like you did it yesterday, and it's not fair. You know. We'll go eat. Go get your book back. Just pisses me off. Then they wonder why. So why is people homeless out here? Why are people living outside? You know? Then you got people sitting up in the big old building yeah. looking down on you. Oh, yeah, we can put up a brand new park here, or we can put up a mall over here. <laughs> what about the homeless? Sweep them under the rug, we'll get you up there, we get back with them later. And just recently they got the hot water. And that's what they doing. I they, they talk about a good thing, but then they're gonna put you up under the carpet like you don't even exist. <laughs> and it's not fair. Did they call this America? This is not America. We might be over in the olden countries over there. That's what we need to be, over in the olden countries, where you have to fight for every day on the same thing. Unfortunately, in downtown, most of the property is owned by someone. Greensboro has very little public space. If you think about, um, in downtown at least, our parks, the empty lots, they're all privately held. There's very little space that people can just be. By the essence of losing your home and losing your private property, you have been rendered illegal in, in our city. And that's a huge problem for people, not only for where they stay, but literally where they spend their day. And that's why places like urban ministries, the different churches that have opened their doors, the IRC, the YWCA are so important because they're actually providing a legal place for people to congregate and exist. Um, this is private property. The, the company has allowed for many years this camp to be here and I personally am grateful for that because I've seen so many success stories come out of this camp just by people having a stable regular place to be. However, if we cannot move this camp onto some other property where they are legally allowed to be and not just out of favors but have some sort of real legal contract a rental agreement like you and i can have some sort of lease that actually gives them protections this camp will continue to be precarious um, and that's what we're looking for in the community ultimately we want people to be housed but in the meantime we need at least a place where people don't exist precariously and illegally every single day even and it's it's not about just somebody doing a favor and saying yeah you can stay here for a while because that's not true stability um, the dignity of a lease is huge for individuals in this situation because it offers them some protections that we've basically as a society taken away from them why did jesse and the other folks like the spot so much anyway it was close to all the resources they needed, the IRC and all the feeding locations in the area. Any resources they need, they could walk to it. It's valuable to have things close when you don't have something like a car to get you there. I think that's a real solution, to move again and find uh -huh. another place to camp. Uh -huh. That's not a real solution. And then you're talking Smith Homes. Yeah, still that's outside. Even, yeah, yeah. you outside and you in the yeah. worst part of the neighborhood yeah, where the crime is. Smith, Smith Homes. Homes that ain't really over there. It's all right over there, but this. Yeah. But you would rather camp here than ever near Smith Hill. Yeah, rather feel safe at. Yeah, the safety you know, and, and, and it's far it's away okay, by the time you get to your stuff. You know, yeah. God knows what'll happen to your tent if it's still sitting there. And what about people like me -wise? Oh, you yeah, definitely people like me why because the, the, the area is you in a drug area, gang and yeah. all that kind of stuff. I mean she could probably could but she you know, it's added there. stress making sure that she would be okay. Because down here, you know, in the city, then ain't nobody doing the whole lot down here with so many people, the police riding around. But that's a, you know, nice drug-infested area over there. Over there. Yeah, yeah so, so. you would be more afraid of it. If you had a... Uh, I wouldn't be afraid of it. I just don't yeah, push just, my stuff over Yeah, you just be more weary of what's going uh, on. People over there are constantly moving around over there. All so. times of the night. Yeah, you think safe as not If they do. And I guess nobody understands what someone's going through except for the tent next door, maybe. I think that's very, very, very true. Um, people might come from all different walks of life and end up here, but at that moment, 
there's an understanding because of where everybody has gone and come to. And and when you're poor, you have to support each other. There's no other choice. Um, so some really interesting lessons could be learned by the rest of our society by the ways that folks within camps um, operate and treat each other. Were you, how long were you outside Shannon before you had this apartment? Oh, off and on, about five years, five or six years. Off and on, I'd be at the shelter and I might stay with a friend, and, but it always runs out, so. About five years. Yeah, about five years. How long has it been since you had full time employment? Oh, since 2008. Whenever everybody lost their jobs in 2000, I was, and since then, and that's a long time to tell somebody. Well, I hadn't had a legit job since, you know, it's 2016. In eight years. Yeah, yeah, and that that shies them away. What you been doing? Of course. You know, I gave up on life, yeah. been homeless. Uh, I go cut grass, do you know, do what I can do, uh, help you move your furniture, you know, wherever I can make a little twenty, thirty dollars, which that's just enough money to come out here. Right. To come out here and say, hey, you know what? I'm tired of eating here. I, I want to go to McDonald's if that's considered a luxury. Right. I right. want to, oh, you know, something eat other than chips and cookies. Oh, right. you know. Yeah. So. You want to go to yeah, McDonald's yeah, and have, and have yeah, that? Have because, a, cause yeah. You, you ain't had it in a while. Eat. You're tired right. of eating cookies. Okay, and, and, you, and, you know, and you're tired of eating at the free food locations. Yeah, yeah, you want to go you eat know, a hamburger. Yeah, like I mean, that's not that I don't appreciate it, but just. Right, I hear you. know. Send me the duck on that cigarette. Have some of this coffee stand a little closer to the fires. Cold as hell out here. That transition has come and gone for these residents of that tent city. Since then, Jesse has moved to a new spot. Alright, back here in the club. I'm in the area right here for right now, temporarily. So I can get on my feet and get out of here, you know. Yeah. That's weird to jump back here because people that used to stay here before left a lot of mess back here. I've been trying to clean it up, but nowhere to take it to. This is my new spot for the time being. Here's my little area right here. And, uh, but here. I've been back here ever since the last time we talked and stuff, you know. We ain't had no problems so far back here because yeah. it's nice and quiet back here, you know, away from everybody. But it's all right so far. It's, it's a pretty sweet spot, actually. Yeah, once you get all this crap out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and you said this is this is from someone else who... Yeah, a guy named Kenny used to stay out here and he left all this mess out here. Yeah. Yeah, so this is all his <laughs> This mm -hmm. is all mine right there. <laughs> yeah. But in that, yeah, I've been trying to clean it up, but I ain't got nowhere to haul it off to. Mm -hmm. You know, I got need like a big dumpster or something to haul it off. But I've been trying to clean it up. Yeah, I've been out here ever since the last time we talked. The last time we talked, we was over on the other side. Yeah, that was back in February. Yeah. So we've been out here chilling, minding our business, you know, trying to keep it on the down low and stuff. Yeah keep the police from getting involved and stuff yeah. we don't bother nobody and that's all we that's where we would have been over there if they would have left us over there right. you know? but other than that things happen but I see they haven't done nothing to the place yet you know they just want to last from over there mm. yeah and we got some more people still in down there so everybody I hate they just all scattered out you know but it's nice out here and I ain't had no problems so far mm. you know yeah hopefully to come through for me. Post start sometime in June 18th. Okay. What kind of job you got? It's setting up tents, breaking down tents and stuff. Okay. Yeah. But I'm still looking for something full time. Yeah. Yeah. Then I go to the baseball field, see what they talking about. They say they were hiring. I don't know. But I'm Not grasshoppers? Yeah. 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 They could be doing something up there, but I just got to go up there and see. Yeah. But yeah, I'm still looking for I'm really looking for uh, landscaping. Anybody knows some landscaping, but I don't think about that. I don't have transportation. Other than that, yeah, I do landscaping work, cooking, mostly cooking and stuff, though. But if you don't have the right proper things to do around, to get around, it's kind of hard. <laughs> I can understand that. Yeah. And I said, you're using a bike? Yeah, this is my little transportation right here. Uh, and I get around most of the time. But in it, yeah, this is where I'm at, you know. If anybody know anything about a job, let me know. Hook me up. Because <laughs> I can sure use the help. Um, 
And as far as uh, services, uh, Ryan, like how do you how do you get by? I mean, how do you um, food and stuff like that? Well, I go out, you know, like to the churches and stuff that's feeding and stuff. Or I get my food stamps. I use them and stuff. But most of the time, I go out to like churches and eat. For lunch, I still go to RIC, do my laundry, and take showers and stuff like that stuff. But that's about it. And other than that, yeah, that's what I do. I go to like places that's feeding, like the RIC, but sometimes they do it up there. And most time I go like to the most churches and uh, to uh, Porter House down there. They feed over there. But that's how I've been surviving, you know. Mm -hmm. Other than that. Long story. Uh, well, I was married to my wife and stuff. And then she took sick and stuff. And I was working full time at this other job, and the job went down, so I had to cut back. Went to a temporary agency. And I was working through them. Me and my wife, and she was getting her disability. I was living, staying with her. And then when she passed, her disability stopped. And the job that I was working for wasn't making up, paying enough money. You know, so I had to give it to my apartment. That's how I became homeless. Cause I never, I ain't never experienced myself being homeless. But when I lost the job that I was, when they went out of business, I had to find me another job. I was paying way less than what I was making to keep the apartment. So that's how I became up homeless. Cause I wasn't making enough to keep the apartment, and plus paying the electricity bill, water bill, light bill, gas bill. It's all coming in at one time. So I had to choose rent or water lights. Rent water lights, so I paid the rent. Then the lights would go off. You know, they couldn't live if you stayed in there with no water, electricity. So it's either way, I lost. <laughs> you know, I lost everything. So now I have to start all over again. Cause I put my stuff in storage, wasn't making enough money to do that, take care of that either. You know, so I lost everything. So that's what put me out here. You know, but it's okay. Some minor setback. I'm not gonna use it as a crutch. You know, but other than that, I'm trying to get back on my feet. Hopefully, I'll be better off this time. But yeah, that's how I became homeless. That's why I say this country's crazy. That's why I'm just out here making it the best way I can. Now, I'm not scared to work. But I love to go to work. If I could turn back time, I would. I remember the time when I was coming up. Work was everywhere. You can go anywhere and find a job. And now you had to go across. Egypt is just to go get a dang on job. A good, decent paying job anyway. You know, that's why I say it's crazy out here now. But for us, me, for the homeless wise, yes, it's hard out here. So those that's got a place, I advise you to keep your head over, keep your keep a roof over your head. Cause if once you come out here and you don't know how to survive, you won't make it. This is what they call the survivors of the fittest out here. All those sitting up in your nice houses, driving these nice cars, eating nice caviar dinners and stuff, they better take a reality check, because this could be them. Never point your finger at a person that's homeless, because that could be you taking their spot. Never never downgrade nobody because they're homeless, because you could be in the worst place than they are in. You know? That's why you know, I don't judge nobody, what they do. I don't give you the richest man in the world. You could be rich today, broke tomorrow. So never, never point your finger at a homeless person. It could be happening to anyone. But yeah, but this is where I'm at, you know. Yeah. I need the little wood for temporary. Hopefully the job come through for me. If it do, I'll be glad. <laughs> but if you never experience homelessness, try not to come out. It's, sometimes it's fun and sometimes it's not. Especially in the winter time. That's the worst time that we have. Mm -hmm. In the winter time. Like this here, it's okay. But not in the wintertime. So, I mean, it get cold out here. It's so cold, you got to fit your tent where the ice won't crush it in and everything. Yeah, other than that, it's alright. Yeah. But that's the way they got. you've been out here and experienced the living out here in this situation, then you know where I'm coming from. If you never lived out here, you can't tell me about life if you don't know nothing about life yourself until you experience it. What, what are some of the shockers for you that you experienced when you lived out here as you said? 
people might not understand. Oh, the shock for me? Well, the shock for me when I first came out here, because I thought I'd never be out. That was a shock for me. I didn't know nothing about where to go, how to do, how to do this. I had to teach myself how to set up a tent. Nobody showed me how to set up a tent. I had to come out here and pick, the, pick out a perfect spot where I could feel safe at without harassing this person over here or being chased off by that person over there. I had to do this all on my own. Nobody gave me no guideline or nothing. When I lost my wife, I lost everything. And I say, I mean, I lost everything that I ever owned. I lost it all. Cause the economy was so messed up. The job that I was working with, a little temp agent, wasn't making enough money to keep everything that I had. So I had to fall way back into a situation that I'm at now. Nobody gave me nothing. Everything that I did own, I got it for myself. Me and my wife. Now she's gone, I'm back here in the streets again. You know? It's a good thing and then it's a bad thing. I don't deserve to be out here. Nobody deserves to be out here. Nobody deserves to be homeless. But the situation, the economy is so messed up now, but most people that you see that you thought would never be out here are out here on the streets. So you never thought that you would end up here? Yeah. yeah. I never thought I'd end up here. But look, at I'm here. That's why I say you're never too big to fall down. That's what they fail to realize. You can work in a job 40 and 50 years. Men can come along and snatch the rug out of money. You already find yourself out here in my shoes. That's why I say no. Train come, let's get off these damn tracks. Come on, go from this way. Come from that way. I'm tired of standing in these long lines or around with my hands in my pockets because it's harder up being unemployed than working on the docks. Hobo, he don't like no snow. Jesse is still frustrated over the fact that there is so much talk about stopping homelessness. After all, in 1964, President Johnson declared a war on poverty. That was over 50 years ago. And still we meet people like Jesse, Shannon, and Miwan. There are a lot of people in this situation all over. All over Greensboro, all over Guilford County, all over North Carolina, and all over our country. Come on, buddy, now stop your cry. Stop. Looking down at your feet, we may go unmentioned in the obituaries, but we'll be remembered by the street. Then you can help everybody else. You want to end homelessness? Stop, get off your butt and quit talking about it, do something about it.